Hello there, sword friends. This is going to be something of a random video. I got some of these little sword holder dealy things here off eBay. And uh, in a nutshell, I'm going to just see how well they work or don't work. I have a pile of swords here, and I would like to display them in a, in a better way. Uh, so I picked up some of these things, and I've been looking for an opportunity to use them. And since the weather outside at the moment is rather frightful, uh, it seems like a good enough time to do it. Now, I'm going to note they come with this goofy little anchor um, and I, it doesn't give me a lot of assurances so I have a pack of drywall anchors that I'm going to be using instead. This is what I typically use to mount stuff if I have to go only in drywall and I'm guessing that most of this wall is going to be drywall specific. So uh, I have a different anchor mechanism to use and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's about it. We'll see how it works. I'm going to try and encompass this wall space with most of these swords so we'll see, we'll see how well I do. sort of friends it's all done well done ish anyway as done as I'm gonna get it and what you can see is uh, it has provided some additional shelf space it's cleaned up my rack over here and allowed me to organize slightly and by slightly I do mean slightly but what it really allowed me to do is get some of the swords out on display that I haven't been able to display or have been hidden away or tucked in a pile believe it or not I still have a few things tucked in a pile but um, I'm actually overall pretty happy with how this worked now uh, I wasn't able to get these off the floor, but given how close these are to the wall, uh, or not to the wall, they're very close to the wall because that's their intention, how close they are to the floor, uh, I kind of like that there's this separation. It allows the piece to be on display, but at the same time, it keeps it away from children's hands. Not that my little one is young enough, but in case there is a young one around here, uh, it, it keeps it mildly away from grabby, grabby hands, though then there's another sword on the floor. Scratch that. It's still extremely dangerous, but I don't really mind it. The things I suppose I would note as you're going through and, and looking at maybe mounting more than one of these, if you are mounting more than one, is give ample separation. So I did nine inches here of, in terms of separation on the top row and on this bottom row here, and really I don't think it's enough. I mean, if you see the cross guard on these Alexandria pieces, it's pretty wide, and it doesn't really provide the separation that I think would look good. It looks a little bunched together, a little cluttered, and I think I could have thought that through a little better. The next thing is that it keeps the sword base or the hilt away from the wall about a half of an inch or a quarter of an inch. No, probably closer to a half of an inch. So I'm able to actually stack these up. Now I, I kept them kind of close to where the, the tip is down here on some of the longer two-handed swords, but uh, overall like you're actually able to, to stagger them and stack them up, and I don't, these aren't actually touching unless I intentionally whack it in there to, to touch. So there is a separation here. It's not just resting on the actual hilts of the swords below it. And I'm pretty happy about that. I could have raised it up, but I thought it gave just a little bit more separation further down. I, I like the aesthetic. I was thinking about putting it here, um, but I just thought it would give maybe a little bit more room for cross guards down here. Either way, it's not, it's not really touching, especially as you get closer to the tip. It rests on the on the wall itself. The other thing to note is that I should probably move this little slope out of the way here for the moment. These are actually pretty secure. They don't rattle or fall off really easily. It can take it can take a smack and it doesn't. You know, I don't know if you live in an earthquake prone environment. I don't know if I would exactly trust it in an earthquake, uh, but but it seems actually pretty stable. So. If it were to take a bump, or if somebody were to drop something, or if something were to 
fall, I wouldn't necessarily worry worry about a, a jostle or a smack making one of these fall off, especially good because it's right above an outlet. I'm sure that's probably a code issue. Anyway, I'm not really worried about it. They seem actually quite stable. Now one slight downside is that these are really made for European style swords. So you see how the little dinghy here works. This separates and then there's a little ledge in here that kind of allows your sword to rest between it. It's not rocket surgery or, or anything like that, but it keeps the whole the sword pretty snug inside there. It's also noted metal on metal, so if you're concerned about a polish, I imagine it could, uh, could cause some very slight scuffing. If you're concerned about that, though, I imagine you could put newspaper or felt or, or something in there to keep it stable or keep it from scuffing. In any respect, uh, that's how it holds, which means there's not, it doesn't really work with swords that have a different style cross guard or something that's really more than an inch or half inch away from the wall. Here's a Japanese style sword, and you can see there's a slight problem because the guard doesn't really let the sword hang. I mean, I guess you could dangle it here, but that's extremely unsecure and it could fall fall over. So uh, I don't know at what point the sword would really be grabbed by this. Maybe here, but that's just going to mar it up. Uh, so these are really intended for cruciform style swords, or if not cruciform style swords, at least something with uh, a reasonably flat handle. Here's a Shashka replica. It seems to be holding on reasonably well. It seems secure, not going to fall down, uh, and that's because it doesn't have a very wide uh, kind of rounded suba or, or guard section. Here's a pulwar, and you can see I'm starting to have the same problem because this I can't remember, it's the fool or the this kind of uh, pommel area here. It doesn't really allow it to to have the, uh, the you know, let the blade grab on. So um, pulwar, tulwar style weapons uh, may also not exactly work well. This beautiful sex, M sax, does the job well with the sax. And that's because it can grab on. So I think the consistent theme is that Realistically, you have to have a pretty, you know, just the, the handle section. So it doesn't have to be a cruciform sword exactly or, or a cross, uh, have a cross guard in the conventional way, uh, but it does need to have a relatively thin section here. If there's something that doesn't allow it to rest very close to the wall, then you're going to have trouble. But I really can't complain about this one. I think it does the job pretty well. It's going uh, to, I don't know. I end up with a lot more of these than I expect. So uh, it does the job for me, and I, I think in terms of a sword mounting option, if you're primarily buying European style swords that have a uh, kind of traditional cross four or cross guard, it doesn't really matter if it's curved, but so long as it's pretty flat to the wall and doesn't have a, a ring guard or a nail or something like that jutting out from both sides that would prevent you from putting it. These things work pretty slick. They're pretty inexpensive. A 12 pack cost me $36 on eBay. Um, and yeah, I think there's probably plenty of places that you can get them and they seem to do the job pretty well. Installation is pretty easy. Uh, frankly, a lot quicker than some of the other stupid projects I've done. And uh, overall the appearance, if I had thought it out better, I think would be nicer, but uh, I'm not displeased really. I think it looks pretty good. It's a nice display and they're out there and pretty looking now. Anyway, that's all I have. I hope it's been helpful. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.